just because someone's not ready for your gift yet, which by the way, notice the meaning, right? Emotion always follows meaning. So when you attach a meaning that you're not enough, you're not good enough and you're inadequate and you just got rejected, all of a sudden, what's the feeling you have? Emotion always follows meaning. So when you attach a disempowering meaning to an event, and by the way, no event has any inherent meaning. It has no meaning in and of itself. We give it the meaning. No event is good or bad except the meaning we add to it. So when you add that disempowering meaning, you have a disempowering what? Emotion. And on the flip side, when you attach an empowering meaning, like they're not ready for my gift yet, let's bless and release them. Perhaps they'll come to their senses down the line. They're not ready for my gift yet. Everything always works out for me, right? I attract the right people. And I also, by virtue of the centrifugal force of my energy and my commitment to my dream and my commitment to my standards and not settling on the standards of the dream team that I'm committed to building, I spit those people out through the centrifugal force of my defiant resolve to have it the way I want it and not settle. But everything always works out for me. Everything always works out for me. I know I'm always divinely guided. When you have that kind of meaning, when you have that kind of identity, you start to prove yourself right in the same way that you prove yourself right when you say you're rejected and you're not good enough. Whatever you believe, you prove yourself right. As the late and great Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. We are all, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, self-fulfilling prophecies. So it's really important that we add a meaning that empowers versus disempowers. Because if you had to choose between one and the other, obviously, why would you settle for anything less than empowered versus disempowered? True? So that's why we get objections. It's a buyer defense mechanism, and it's the nature of the beast. So rather than try to avoid objections entirely, why not learn how to leverage them and how to use them to ascend higher in your business. It's like the Wright brothers, they didn't eradicate gravity in order to have airplanes take flight, did they? They learned how to use the law of gravity and the law of lift, which is a superseding law, by the way. It's a higher law than the law of gravity. And once they discovered the law of lift and how it supersedes the law of gravity, they were able to take flight and do the seemingly impossible. Same thing here. The goal is not to eradicate objections. The goal is to be able to supersede them and to be able to transcend them such that you eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all day, every day, and turn them into opportunity, turn them into new relationships, turn them into new connections. And truth be told, we are in a relationship business. And so the more meaningful relationships you're able to cultivate, especially with top producing realtors who make you their exclusive, who send you all their business all the time, put you on their speed dial, the more meaningful relationships you make with top producing realtors who have the highest capacity, by the way, to send you the most amount of business most often, the more revenue you're going to have. The more relationships, the more revenue. It's a direct correlation. So knowing that that's the case and you're in a relationship business, obviously, it only makes sense to become a badass when it comes to cultivating relationships. And the only way to do that is to learn